How's it going everybody? In this video we're going to take a look at our next NAT topic which is going to move away from the templates configuration that we've been leveraging for the, the past few variations and we're going to be looking at a centralized data policy. Now this is one of the first times that I've dove into this so it was a little bit like, huh, okay. But when you start diving into the operations of it, it's actually not that bad. The idea is traffic from VH3 or VH4 is going to be policy driven. So for example, traffic from iOS 13 that is internet destined. So going to the internet, so pinging 1.2.3.4 or doing a trace route or whatever, opening up a telnet, a ping, whatever the case might be, that is not RFC 1918. So outside of our private IP address ranges, that traffic will be sent out VPN zero to NAT via policy. So we are going to get rid of our static route that's configured in VPN one to point to VPN zero. We're going to get rid of that to prove that it's actually working the way that we say it is. We're going to create that VPN policy to make sure that VPN one traffic descent to the internet is actually sent out VPN zero. We're also going to create another VPN policy that says if the traffic matches anything 10 net, because that's what we're running internally is all 10 nets. If that traffic is the destination, we're going to send it over the VPN. That's basically what we're going to accomplish here. So that is essentially what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and dive into the config. I'm going to go ahead and pull up vManage real quick. vManage is right here. The first thing I need to do is go to the templates real quick, go to features, and I'm going to organize this so that VPN one right here we are not going to send the default route to VPN zero. So I'm gonna go IPv4 route, and I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this guy. Go ahead and update that, push the config out. So we're just gonna next configure devices and push this out to the devices so we're in good shape there. All right, so I'm gonna pause while that happens. All right, so that's been pushed. If we check the config, uh, the CLI, we go to VEDG3, we hit the up arrow, do a show IP route. Um, actually, let's do this, show IP route VPN. We no longer have a NAT route in the routing table, right? So that's gone now. We just get the default routes from OMP. So now what I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna co-create our policy. And the policy itself is actually very, very straightforward. We're gonna come over here to policies. And I have a hub and spoke policy in here already, but um, that's just me testing. Just pretend like you don't see that at the moment. I'm going to come over here to custom options and I'm going to go to lists. So you can do this or you can come in here and define your list this way or you can go to centralized policy and then click on add policy and then go to data prefix and get there the same way. I'm going to add a data prefix in here called uh, 10 nets and I'm just going to come in here and do 10.0.0.0 slash 8. Something very, very simple. Click on add. Okay. Now the next thing I need to go do is I'm going to bypass the um, the configured topology and VPN membership because this is not a control policy. Okay, so I'm not trying to do any type of route override. But I will configure a traffic rules. So not application aware routing, but I will come over here to traffic data. And I'll click on add policy, create new. And here I'm gonna call this uh, NAT policy copy and paste this in like so. I'm gonna add a sequence type of custom and then add a sequence rule. Now what I wanna do is in the destination data prefix portion of it, I'm going to come in here and say, if it's 10 nets, I'm going to simply click on, with, on the actions tab, click on accept, and I'm also going to add a counter. I'm just gonna call this counter one, okay? Because you, if you, you can add a counter to whatever you want, for the most part, where if you name it, it's gonna be unique. So counter one, counter two, counter three, and then when you go take a look at it on the V edges, you can see what traffic is hitting which policy. So I'm gonna go ahead and save, match, and continue. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy that, but I'm gonna edit. And I'm going to say, if, if traffic is going anywhere else, okay, I am going to actually close, I'm gonna kill that match condition, so I wanna match on anything. The actions itself, I'm going to come in here and say NAT VPN. I'm gonna NAT VPN to VPN zero, but I'm gonna call this counter two, because it's gonna be the second option here. Save, match, and continue. So the way that this works is if traffic is heading 
via the to anything in the ten net. So I don't care where it's going inside of it's a corporate it's a corporate connection. So it's going to be going to any of the sites, whether it's a data center, whether it's HQ, over to the um, VH5, wherever it's going. That's the destination of ten anything. Go ahead and send it via the SD WAN policy. So send it over the overlay to the remote sites. This bottom one here says anything else, go ahead and just send it over to VPN zero. So I'm gonna go just make sure that it's actually doing that VPN zero, save, match, and continue. We can expand this out so it should say VPN zero. We're not gonna do fallback, that doesn't seem to work. I have tested it, it doesn't seem to work. I'm gonna go ahead and save data policy. And now I need to go to the next step, which is to apply it to sites and VPNs. So right here, I'm gonna come in here and call it the um, NAT policy, right? Come down here, copy and paste. On traffic data, I'm going to, let me, I, this should have been something different, but it's okay. I'm gonna add new, uh, new site. This is gonna be from the service VPN. So this is gonna be inbound from the routers. So this is gonna be traffic that is coming from Traffic going this way. So traffic going to 10.1.0.16. So switch 16's loopback address, right? This guy right here. This should ride over, actually let me bring this down just a little bit more so you guys can see it in its entirety. This traffic right here, actually let me back this up a little bit. Change the color. This traffic should flow to the V edge this way if it's going to 10.1.0.16. But if I have traffic going to 1.2.3.4, that traffic should go out locally to the internet. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Actually, let me clear that up a little bit. If I have traffic going to, let me swap the color real quick. If I have traffic going to 10.1.0.16, it should ride over SD-WAN and go this way. But if I have traffic, going to 1.2.3.4, that traffic should go out locally to the internet. That's how the traffic should flow should work, okay? Now, now that we've covered that, let's go ahead and bring the VED, uh, vManage back up. One thing that I will mention to you is that there's supposed to be a failover option available to it. I don't know where the failure is occurring, but for some reason, um, maybe it's the version of code I'm running, maybe it's my configuration, I haven't been able to pinpoint the problem yet, but you should be able to fail over to internet at the HQ site. So in the event that local internet goes down, that you should be able to ride over the SD-WAN topology and then terminate at the HQ site. That is not actually happening when I tested it out. It is what it is, but um, this is how you can separate traffic from VPN versus internet traffic. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this up real quick. So this is gonna be from the service VPN, this is the site list that we're gonna create here. I'm gonna say vEdge3 and vEdge4, that's where I wanna apply this to. And I'm going to say from site VPN list, it's gonna be VPN1. You can ignore some of the other ones you see there. I'm gonna go ahead and click on add, and then save policy. Now the policy has been saved. I'm gonna go ahead and click here on the NAT policy and I'm gonna go ahead and activate it and push it down to the vSmart. Now this is a tr this is a centralized data policy which means it will be pushed down to the V edges. We'll take a look at that here in just a moment. All right, the config has been pushed so we pull back up our config and we look at the show policy from vSmart. We can see that we have a policy deployed. It's called VPN one NAT policy. We can see that we are matching on 10 nets, right? 10 nets is right here. We have 10 nets. We can see the 10 slash eight coming across. We can see we're accepting it and we've got counter one associated to that. Then in sequence 11, we're matching on any destination other than that. We're going to send it out and use uh, NAT use VPN zero, okay? And I've got two different counters associated to that. So to do the show policy, policy, and then you have the option of doing the data policy filter and hitting the enter key. And you can see that there are a couple of 
policy counters here. So we already see traffic hitting the second one, which means it's traffic going out to the internet. So we go to iOS 13, and I come in here, and I try to ping 1.2.3.4. I'm able to go out by looking at VH3, hit the up arrow. I am sending traffic out to the internet, right? If I go to here and I telnet to 1.2.3.4, log in as Rob and Cisco, who? I'm coming in as dot .96, right? So the dynamic NAT policies that we had before are still working. If I look back at VH3 and I do a show IP NAT filter pipe tab, we can see that that connection's going out locally, right? And if we do a sh hit the up arrow a couple times and look at the filter, we can see the traffic is going out to the internet. Excellent, so it's working as we would expect it to. Go back to 13, exit out. Okay, the next test for me to go do would be to do a ping to 10.1.0.16. So that's going to ride over to the HQ site. So that's working. If we look at VH3 and hit the up arrow, now we can see that these policies are kicking in. So the counter one. So policy one, if we look at the policy again, we can see the policy one is sending it over the VPN. So we're going over the SD-WAN overlay. So we have that in play. Now if I come over here and I do a telnet connection, or if I do a trace route, excuse me, to 10.1.0.16 numerically, we should ride over. We're here we're hitting V edge two, and then eventually we're hitting switch 16 attached to V edge two, and we're getting to where we need to go, which is what we want to see. Okay, so that's working the way that we intended it to be. So that's working. Now the next step up for us to go through and do would be to do a telnet connection. Telnet to 10.1.0.16. Okay, so it basically won't let us do it because we don't have a password enabled. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. Config T line VTY zero space four. We'll type in login local. Transport input is all. Username Rob. Privilege level 15. Password is Cisco. Something very simple. Go back to 13. Do that one more time. Blamo, we get our login credentials. And I, of course, type in the password wrong. You would think for as many times as I've typed in Cisco, I'd get it right. Go back to VH3, look at the filter, and we can see lots and lots of packets are going over, over here. So that, in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, is how that would work. Pretty simple stuff when you think about it overall and how it operates. Not much more to it than that. That's a centralized data policy for NAT. So that's... Basically what I wanted to cover in this video, pretty straightforward stuff. So if you guys have any questions on that, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And until next time, guys, take her easy.